Hello and welcome to the Crooky Curious. I'm the Monk and today we are in Crusader Kings 3 and we are doing another Let's Play Beginner's Guide. We're going to be playing over maybe one, maybe two, maybe even three lives within this playthrough. Um, kind of like solving problems as we face them. Of course, I'm going to be talking about why I'm doing it, what I'm doing, and my future plans and goals within this playthrough. Hopefully you guys learn something. Hopefully um i get to explain things in a certain way for you to actually understand i know that in my last playthrough i've done a few people said that i've done things that may be a little bit too fast so i'm going to do my best to kind of slow things down a bit try and really explain what it is i'm doing and why i'm doing it and of course you know like i said solve those problems as they come in the game I'm going to get things wrong and I'm going to do things that perhaps I'm going to regret because the thing about Crusader Kings 3 is you are constantly making decisions. Every decision you make is going to impact your game. So don't ever expect to have a perfect playthrough because it's just not going to happen. That's not how this game is designed to be played either. I know that Paradox Interactive just literally let out a statement as well saying that they are about to go on their summer break, which means we're probably not going to get another update um, until the end of August now um, for the console or for PC players. We've got a couple of good things to come from that. We've got a definite time when we know that they're going to be working, which is absolutely great. So we know we're going to be getting things in the future. We know certain things are waiting to come to console. Um, but the other thing is, is that we're not going to get anything for like another two, three months. And that kind of sucks. Um, however, it is good to see that they did fix the game quite a bit in their last update. Um, so I'm glad to see that. Positives and negatives to be found there for sure. I'm thinking... I'm thinking in this playthrough, we do things a little bit different. In the last playthrough, we played as White Shirt. We had a great time. It was a really good playthrough. We successfully conquered the entirety of England, pretty much, um, in the playthrough that we done. And it was really well received, so I really appreciate all that support. As ever, guys, if you do enjoy this content, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, comment your thoughts down below. And as ever, if you want to place a chat about this game or any game you may be playing, we do have a Discord, uh, and I will drop that link down in the description. As for this what game right now, I think what we're going to do is do something a little bit different. Um, last time we played, we played as a feudal, we played as a Norse, so we're going to go a little bit different on this one. And we also played in Europe. So I think I think this would be a good idea to either pick a different corner of the map or go straight for the middle. I'm just not sure what we could do. Should we go big? Because in the last, well, I guess we kind of had the power last turn, didn't we? So, okay, we're going to go small. And I think... I think possibly we're going to pick Kong because, and the reason I say because, um, I really enjoyed this playthrough um, last time I played it. It's also a playthrough that I have recommended to you guys on my channel before, so I think it'd be a good idea to play as them. I think it'd be a good idea. The aim of this, obviously, is just to gobble up as many of these city-states as you possibly can, uh, and I think Kong is a good central area to kind of start from plus we've got a half decent life ahead of us as you can see we are only 25 um so we've got a decent life ahead of us um and we just have to hope that the crusader king's gods are kind to us and we get decent stats so we just started again we just picked our character and we do definitely have a few things to do before we even uh unpause the game unfortunately guys so let's go through those different options let's have a look at our character see what kind of role we actually got we've got diplomacy which is a 12 so that's kind of average marshall is poor that's terrible we're not gonna be winning many wars with this guy that's for sure stewardship again poor and intrigue is absolutely terrible learning is nine which isn't too bad um, but in general bad bad stats keep a watch out for that something else to definitely keep a watch out for is your traits 
your traits, your personality traits, they are incredibly important to how you play your game. For instance, I am honest. So if I go around backstabbing and being deceitful, that's going to cause me extremely high stress. If I have bad stress, I'm probably going to die early. So keep an eye on that. Uh, unfortunately, if you've never played this game before, if you are early in your career of Crusader Kings 3, you'll realize that you really can't play how you want to play sometimes, because if you do, it's going to cost you um, quite severely. So look at your character, look at what their strengths are. Every character has strengths. Um, Frax, you know, this guy is honest. That could be a strength. He's just particularly bad at entry. That kind of sucks for us right now. Uh, but we have to play this way or it's going to be a very short life for us. Uh, all in all, though, not great um, personality traits, to be fair. I did also do a video on ranking all the personality traits in a game. And I'm not exactly happy with those, but it is what it is. So let's have a little look, see, look at our lifestyle. And yeah, we've got some learning, so I'm not really surprised about that. Do we have anything that I particularly want? Well, to be fair, scientific is pretty good. Uh, that ups our cultural fascination. So if we're looking for end game, we're going to be able to develop more technologies relatively faster, which is quite cool. Also, plan conservation. Again, that's also pretty good for uh, increasing the development in our counties. Which is, So it's not too bad. However, I don't think I'm going to stick with learning this time around. I know he's good at it, but I think what I want to work on is stewardship or possibly piety. I'm thinking that if I go to attack somebody with who I am right now, it's going to cost piety. Um, it's not going to cost prestige. Let's go to attack so I want to make sure that I'm correct. Let's go to declare war. We'll go to conquer the county. Uh, we will look at the objectives. And okay, this is hitting prestige. This is hitting prestige. For some reason, I thought it was going to be hitting our piety. Let's make sure that that's correct go to war again uh, conquer the county go to objectives and again yeah it's hitting our prestige okay so that gives us a few different options because depending on who you play as it can do different some of them it costs you faith to you know to conquer people others it costs prestige this taste is prestige and we've actually got 300 prestige so we're kind of sitting pretty here uh, so i'm going to go for stewardship and I think I'm going to increase. No, I've just realized we've got incredibly bad martial skills. What about martial? What can we do here? We can increase our martial, go for strategy focused. And then eventually go down. Not engineer for destruction, because I'm pretty sure we don't have. I'm pretty sure we don't have siege weapons right now, so that's not going to work for us. But maybe if we go down a gallantry, that could work. Uh, so let's select this and we'll have a look at the gallant. Yeah, that could work because our knight effectiveness is improved by 75%, which is pretty awesome. That's also going to help give us a bit of an advantage in a battle. As we probably don't have many knights right now. So we are actually married. I don't think I want to be married. So we're going to... Oh, I was going to get a divorce. If I get a divorce, that costs me my piety. Piety is always useful early game, but we're going to do it. So we got divorced. And that means we get to find a, another spouse, um, which immediately means we get to look for alliance power. So yay to us. Alliance power is really important. Um, who's the biggest, the baddest that we can get? This guy is superior to us. He's 865 um, in power. That would be a very good ally for us, especially as we are 545 right now. Early game, the more alliances you have, the stronger you are. Other people simply are not going to want to attack you. Uh, if they're reading the fact that your combined power is, say, 3000 when they are you know, a thousand in strength. If you're bigger than them, they will not want to attack you. So the more alliances you have, the better. And especially 
if you plan on taking over lots of little places. Because when you take over lots of little places, lots of little cultures, um, religions are kind of merging. People don't like that. You can have uprisings, you, you know, and factions happening. There's going to be little uh, in-house wars. That's when you can call on your allies to sort those wars out for you, which is really helpful. So let's see. So we've got a wife sorted out. We do have two children. So first of all, we can educate one of the children, um, which is good for us. How old is he? He's eight. As an eight-year-old, that means we can actually pick his focus. And I think we're going to go for... I'm going to go for learning. There we go. We go for learning. And because of his traits that he has, um, this learning focus is going to be beneficial towards him. If he was to go for one, that kind of goes against his nature. As you can see, it's not a good mix. It says that, uh, that he may struggle with this education. Um, so, yeah, as long as it's all green, you're kind of golden. We're also going to look for a spouse. We're going to go for Alliance Power. And there we go. That is a, another ally for us. Now if we look at our other son, they are zero. They're zero years old, not even one years old. We're not going to be able to change their learning focus right now. I think it's six. I think if they're six or older, you're able to change that. We are going to go to educate him, though. It's very important that you educate your children as quickly as possible. Uh, that way they get the most stats out of that education. Secondary spouse. Let's go to Alliance Power again. That's a good one. That works out well for us. We're going to go for a secondary spouse again. Go to Alliance Power. Again, we're going to try and get... A different alliance. Filter that for alliance power. You could do inheritable traits if there is a particularly good inheritable trait, for instance. Uh, that would be very beneficial. Uh, especially if you manage to get something like genius, for instance, in in your go early on. Uh, who do we want to do? Let's try. Okay. There we go. So we've got our four uh, marriages. We have married off our two children. So that's potentially six alliances that we're going to get straight off the bat. And it will be it will go us in good stead, to be fair. That should be more than enough. Um, now let's have a look at our military. Go over to our units. We've got five champions currently. None of them are going to be our heirs. So that's all good. Don't really need to worry about that. Um, we probably don't have many. Yeah, we don't necessarily have many uh, champions to choose from right now. Uh, but let's go to create a man at arms unit. And there we go. As I said, we have no, uh, no siege weapons. Siege weapons are so important early game. I recommend if you are playing someone different and you actually have siege weapons open to you, that siege weapons be the very first regiment that you guys actually create. As we don't have any, uh, what I'm going to choose is bowmen. Bowmen is a very good one because, um, as you can see, they count as skirmishes. Most armies early game are made up as levies, and levies count as skirmishes. They are the perfect kind of um, counter to most early armies. I'm going to go for two separate regiments instead of having one regiment that I level up. We've gone for two separate regiments, um, purely that way. So that way, if it comes to the stage where we want to split our army, for instance, we can have a regiment of bowmen in each army that we have split. And let's have a look at our council, something that we definitely want to work on. Um, it's not looking pretty right now. Um, we have... The guy in charge of our religious area, he doesn't particularly like us, which isn't cool. You definitely always want them to be on side. We do, however, have a spy master who has slightly better stat. Not a great stat, but a little bit of better stat. So let's try that. And he also likes us, so that works in our favor. 
let's look at our spy master because that intrigue level is very low uh it looks like we can swap out our marshal to get a very high intrigue i like that uh, let's have him find secrets in Kong. There we go, that works out well. Only going to take four months. Let's also fabricate a claim. Where should we fabricate a claim? Let's fabricate one for up there. It's going to take 17 months. Our marshal is horrendous at three. Do we have anyone better? We do, but it's our chancellor. Oh, I think that's probably going to be more beneficial to us right now. So we're going to swap that over. Did I do that wrong? Did I look at the wrong dude? I feel like I did. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Do we have anyone better? Slightly better. Not much at all. However, okay, so we've got a decent Chancellor and we've got a decent Spy Master. Um... Our religious leader is okay sitting at 13, so that's not too bad. As soon as we get a new wife in, hopefully she'll have half decent stats um, and she'll be able to help boost up a little bit, which will be quite handy. Uh, I don't think we need to look at anything there. There's definitely going to be decisions that I'd want to do. For instance, I would want to search for a physician. I can't right now, unfortunately. Uh, we just don't have the money. So instead, what we could do is look at where's our knights gone? Oh, no, I know, I know what we do. We'll, we'll do that in, in just a second. So let's look at our hints. Hints is a really good place. You'll basically find everything you need to do within your uh, little area. Uh, up in your hints, it tells you pretty much everything you're able to do. In this case, all we can do is wage war, which we'll do in a second. So let's unpause the game real quick. There we go. So we got an accepted uh, betrothal, which is quite nice. And we have got an accepted betrothal again, another alliance formed. Oh, so we've only got the one right now. That's kind of annoying. We're going to have to try that again. Oh, look, we've got a genius. This person right here has a genius trait. A really, really good trait. If we can get that in future children, it's very helpful. Oh, she's a seductress. Okay. She's got really good fertility, which means we're definitely going to have kids. Uh, she's good in intrigue as well. So that works out well. Let's go for her. No alliance power with that one, though. But there we go. We have accepted a marriage. We can't. Why can't we get a secondary wife? What am I doing wrong? range of secondary wife and we're, we're still not doing it there it is okay there's the secondary wife i was wondering what was happening it just wasn't popping up for us i think the game was lagging a little bit i think that's what it was the game does do that though it does seem to be a little bit slow on the uptake sometimes or you'll kind of figure out a cool little thing that you're able to do and the game will just refuse to allow you to do it even though you're doing everything right you know unfortunately the console version is just a little bit buggy at times there we go so we need one more again we're looking for alliance power No alliance power there, so that's kind of useless to us. I don't think we've got anyone left. We're going to have to go for an inheritable trait then. Instead. 
There we go. That should be all Christy now. I think also what we could have done is possibly been marrying people from the same family. That could have been something to keep an eye on. Let's have a look to see if that was it. No, no, maybe not. Okie dokie. So let's have a look at our first kind of place to go to war against. Declare war. We are definitely more powerful than these guys, but we're more powerful than them because um, we have a lot of alliances. There we go. That works out well. And we have objectives. That's going to cost us 75. We have 234 um, prestige, so that's going to work really well. Let's pause the game really quickly because they've already got their troops mustered. As you can see, anything brown is is bad and let's go to raise our troops we're up to 800 now uh, because if we have a look at our military we've got those two units right there which is kind of adding us up there i'm going to bring them over and do a straight attack we should absolutely obliterate them pretty easy looks like they're wanting to run they're going to go around the side so we might be able to might be able to take them over before they even do any damage. So let's fast forward that and see how we go. We've got seven months on this attack. Uh, intrigue, we have... Okay, we'll, we'll try that. See how that goes. Four months, three months. So this is going to be a very quick, easy win. Oh, we don't want Paranoid. Paranoid isn't something I like. Ambitious is. I do quite like Ambitious. Ambitious. Sadistic. No, I like Sadistic. So, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Um, so this is one of our sons that we're teaching. Every now and again, these things will pop up. And it will ask you to choose kind of how their personality traits uh, tend to go. So, I quite like Sadistic because I like going down that kind of route. I enjoy that uh, kind of playthrough. Um, and although he's not currently my player heir, but if we get enough decent traits into him, I may manipulate the game into making him my, my player heir. So we're going to go for Sadistic. Bear in mind when you do kind of tweak people, as you can see, we're going to gain 30 stress here. If we get to 100 stress... That could potentially be problematic for us, so it's definitely something to think about or to keep in mind. And we will also get an unpressed claim. So let's do that. Let's say are you okay to that. It's going to cost us a bit of money, but we are making money. It's okay to go into debt a little. And we have won our war. Won a war pretty easy, very, very quick and easy as we were out matching them. Let's disband. There we go, we've got another bit on, on Kong. So I'm going to be looking to attack somebody else. Let's see what these guys have got. We can't declare war on them. Who can we declare war on? We're, oh, we can't declare war because we're in debt. That makes absolute sense. We're going to have to wait just a tiny second. Now, we are being called to war. I would probably recommend accepting them. It really does depend on you. This is kind of a downfall of having a lot of allies. You're going to be called to war a fair bit, especially if you have some half-decent troops. When it comes to early game, you tend to find that when you do get called to war, you don't necessarily need help. Um, so it's something to keep an eye on. Accept the call to war. Keep an eye on the war. Also remember, all you need to do is have one war score. Um, and that kind of counts as you making your best effort to help them. Of course, when they ask for help, that's what they're asking for. Help. They don't want you to win the war. They just want you to help them. And of course, it's up to you if you choose to actually go all in and properly aid your allies. Um, personally, I'm not going to. Uh, we're going to let him do him. If he needs help, he needs help. If we get a sing if we need to get a single war score, 
Um, that's what we do, but at the moment we're just going to let him do him. And we are a couple of months away from being able to declare a war once we are. That's going to be all Kushti for us. And we're going to go and take over a, another piece of land. We've got a new perk. That's excellent. Okay, so at the moment he is arrogant. I quite like arrogance. So we're going to keep that. Uh, pause the game real quick. Go to lifestyle and we get to pick our very first one and we're going to pick our steward leader uh, because this gives us four prowess, uh, which is quite cool. It also reduces our risk of getting injured uh, when we're leading our armies and that is effectively what we're doing right now. And we're no longer in debt, so that's Christy. We also get a son. Uh, so let's call him, let's call him Monk. There we go, son. Uh, he's oh, probably not going to be a player here, and I may even kill him off later. So, fun stuff when you're born into a family. So, what we need to do now is attack somebody else. Oh, he has... Does he have that, or does he have allies? I'm surprised to see a big number like that. He must have... He has allies. Who's his ally? Ah, okay. Well, that was annoying. There we go. He only has 400. Again, we're going to go for Conqueror County. Go to Objectives. He only has the one. It costs us 75. We've got more than. So let's go to Declare War there. We're going to raise our army once again. Allow that to actually work. So the war that we got asked to help him, he's already been defeated. Um, and because it happened so quickly, it, it didn't really affect us in the sense that our relationship with uh, with that guy, he's just obviously a weaker ally now. But again, that's not really my problem. I want the allies so that way other people don't see me as an easy pickings and it means that I get free reign to do what I want. Let's go and attack the capital. Again, when it comes to wars and earning that earning that battle score as quickly as possible, um, taking over their capital will always earn you really good battle score. Uh, winning actually victories, you know, land victories against, against uh, the enemy, that will, again, score you really, really well. Also, let's say, for instance, we were actually trying to get this little province here. If we captured that province that we're trying to get, you would also get a decent amount of war score there. And we actually got 100%, even though they had captured one of our little bits. But because um, a capital trumps the little side, they're not that powerful. We managed to win that pretty easy. Now again, we are in debt. We're going to very quickly disband. Of course, when you raise your troops, your your troops do cost more money. So keep that in mind. So we're going to wait to not be in debt once again. When we're not in debt, that's good for us. And uh, we'll be able to take over someone else, which will be pretty soon. We also just got a daughter. That's something to keep an eye out on. Um, Because you can, you know, try and go for a more alliance power. Um, just remember that if you want anything to stay in your family rather than go and add to another family, you're going to want this little box ticked. If you don't have it ticked, everything goes to the family you're kind of marrying them into. However, for a thousand in my alliance power, I'm going to take that and yeah, I don't mind kind of losing my daughter um, to get that extra power. That sounds awful, doesn't it? The way these guys possibly used to live is quite shocking sometimes. Uh, when it comes to your son, obviously it doesn't really matter. Uh, of course, if you do tick that with your son, that's not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. Uh, 
and we should be able to wage war once again. Let's have a look. They've got a pretty good little army. I kind of want just easy kind of pickings right now. There we go, easy pickings. Again, make sure we've got our objectives. We know that we've got enough here. This one's actually going to cost piety. Again, remember I said earlier that piety is really important. Some cost piety, some cost prestige. This one right here is the cost of, of piety. So we're going to attack them. Then we're going to raise again. Approval accepted, which is cool. Another betrothal accepted, so that's two alliances we've got now. Just won our first land battle as well. Ooh, okay, so... So this is our main player heir. I know that because of the older one. Um, and right now he enjoys his food. Gluttonous is definitely not a personality trait I would like to keep personally. Um, so let's have a look. We can have impatient. Impatience could be a good one, to be fair, or shy. So I guess it's going to have to be impatient. You don't want shy. You don't want gluttonous. Gluttonous can lead to an early life. So we're going to take the extra 30 stress. It puts us up to, what, 60 now? Um, and we're going to go for impatient. Let's have a look, see how long we've got. We've got four months left here. Uh, up to the task. Some of the councillors believe the job is theirs, but by right of blood or influence alone, uh, how wrong they are. I accept results. Okay, so what to do? Who do I want to kind of? I think we're going to do. We're going to. We're going to do this instead. I think that will work. It's all about who in your council, I guess, you want to keep on side. And there we go. There is another little victory for us. And Kong is looking a little bit bigger, a little bit better. And so far, we're absolutely golden. Again, we're in debt. And because we're in debt, that means we're going to have to wait a tiny little second before we can actually go into war. I actually realized I completely forgot to check on my culture. Um, and that would have been a really good idea. For instance, I could be well on my way to getting uh, <laughs> uh, getting siege weapons, which is really what I should be doing. Um, however, I don't believe I'm head of culture. And because I'm not head of culture, I'm not able to, to change this right now. I will be, though. I will find him and I will kill him. <laughs> Okay, so let's look. We are still lacking a little bit. We're in debt. We can create a duchy. It's going to cost money, however, and we still have too few uh, spouses. If we've got no decent alliance power, we kind of don't need alliance power right now. Let's look at inheritable traits and see if anyone's got anything half decent. We could have a baby from that. 27 gives us plenty of time. Although I quite like this one. This is a really good one because it gives you extra uh, life expectancy. As you can see, they're also fertile up 50%. So you're going to have... Uh, lots of heirs. So we're going to go there. There we go. Gladly accept the hand in marriage, which is good for us. Now let's just wait for that tick. And hopefully, in just a second or two, we should not be in debt. There we go. Pause again once again. I'm going to go to council real quick because we are married now. And it means that we can choose what we want help on and 
There we go. Managed the main, get us a little bit more money. Obviously, the steward's not necessarily happy with that because he's got someone kind of watching over his shoulder. If you did look, it just went from a plus 23 to a plus 21. And now we need a new marshal as well. There we go, we'll ask our champion to be our marshal. And now let's pick someone else to attack. Expand what we're on with right now. They have a decent ally. We do have 4,000 in alliance power. However, we only have 1,300. Now, 1,300 is bigger than his 1,000. But things can happen in this game. So I kind of want to see if there's any more easier pickings. There may not be, but we're going to have a look around. 1,600... I think this is the guy that actually had a decent size. Yeah. And he's allied. What about this guy right here? Let's have a look. 400. There we go. Nice and easy battle again. Always kind of make sure the game is doing exactly what you want it to do. Also, something to keep an eye on, every now and again, they're able to get an alliance that you didn't really see happening. So when you start a battle, you think you're up against a certain number, and it ends up being you're up against a lot more. So keep an eye on that. I've just noticed that we are obviously ill right now, which could be a problem. We don't have a physician. We don't have money to hire a physician. We're going to go for the option anyway. Thing. it will allow us to be in debt it will but it means it's going to put us on the back step for our next attack unfortunately let's pause that real quick go into alliance we have a lot of troops however they seem to have a lot of troops on the field so let's see how this actually works out for us it says they only have a hundred troops, but as you can see, there's more than that. The other thing to look out for is money. If they have a decent amount of money, they can just straight away hire mercenaries, um, which are, will obviously boost their, their numbers quite a lot. Pause the game, and we won that before they were able to take over something, so that was nice and quick and easy for us. No, we lost. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. We went over. We had more than enough to, to win that. At least we did in, in, in numbers-wise. Obviously, that's not what happened, which is, which, which is annoying. Absolutely annoying. But I guess we did make our first mistake, and I said that at the beginning of the video, that we was going to make mistakes. It's kind of natural. We are always going up against so many decisions. Um, in this game and you really do have to take it one step at a time however i think for the fact that we've only been playing what half an hour or so um i think we're doing okay i think we've we've conquered a nice little bit we've managed to get a couple of extra little states uh for our empire of kong and we've got a good few alliances, which is also really nice. Um, and I think we're in a good, powerful position for the next episode to continue expanding um, our empire. Hopefully things go well. So far, so good. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts on this episode, whether I done well, whether I didn't do well, whether you would have done something differently, whether you wouldn't have taken on that battle at the end there, because I probably should have just gone home. But thank you for joining me, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Until next time, I've been a monk, we've been a Chris at Uclueless, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, happy gaming.